choose to not be first. Do we do enough? Well, I never shut up about it. Uh, it must have been about 17, 16, 17. We nicked their guilt ring. Right, the bouncer's guilt ring. This is no good for me. That's the reality. If you want the honest truth, and I see it every day. This is Colin McGuigan for IFL TV. Edward, first of all, I feel like it would be wrong of me not to address the Sandy Ryan issue. That is the worst judging I've ever seen. Yeah, I mean, look, I've you know, work with both fighters, so you never want to be. Uh, yeah, you know, it's difficult to be one way or the other. But I saw what everybody else saw. You know, I saw. Um, Saw a Sandy Ryan victory. I mean, nine, I, I, you know, 97 93 for Jessica McCaskill. And listen, she battled away really well. She won rounds, I felt. Not that many. I thought it 97 93, 98 92. But to see 97 93 for Jessica McCaskill and the draw, I mean, look, and I don't want to be, it's, it's not Jessica's fault, it's not Rick Ramos's fault, but people's dreams get shattered. You know, for Sandy Ryan, that was a life changing moment. And, you know, even in the Conor Ben fight, 96, 94, what, what fight are you watching? I mean, a Roscoe, you've got to give him a round. I mean, if you want to give him two, fair enough, right? And I went over to the judges after that one, because I, like, after the Sandy one, and I just said to him, what fight are you guys watching? Like, you're telling me that was one round away from a draw. I mean, don't get me wrong, it's a brilliant fight. But, you know, it's the same like with the Sandy Ryan fight. Jessica McCaskill fought Welsh, fought a higher. But Sandy Ryan won that fight. Like, and I don't think it was really that close, in all honesty. But the problem is, you know, sometimes you can see, it, you get a draw and you go, but 97, 93, you're telling me Sandy Ryan won three rounds in that fight. It's, it's, it's wrong, you know, and it's, it's got to be, you know, everyone knows it's, it's wrong. But I just don't, I just don't understand how you can see it, you know? That's what I don't get. Sometimes you get a scorecard and you go, yeah, maybe a round or two out. But that's like... What did the judges say back to you whenever you did confront them? I, it was the Conor Ben fight. I just bent over, I went over the, the ropes. And I hate to do it, but sometimes I get wound up. And I just said, what the fuck are you lot watching? And I shouldn't say it, but I just... I'm that passionate. Like, I'm done, fuming. But you're, you're, you're... It's the livelihood. It's, the, it's like... <laughs> you're telling me like you're a round away from a draw in that fight. I just it baffles me, you know. So, um, yeah, I think um, yeah, Sandy Ryan deserves to be the unified world champion tonight. Do you then rematch that in the yeah, UK immediate both, rematch? You know, both fighters under contract, so we can look to do that. But you know, it, it disrupts the career, and um, it was a great fight. Like it was a really, really good fight, and. Um, you know, we should be talking about how great the fight was, what a great performance it was, and how, you know, how great both fighters were in the fight. But instead, we're talking about the scorecards. Conor Ben, Rodolfo Orozco, is that good matchmaking or bad matchmaking, <laughs> in your opinion? I mean, uh, if you're a fight fan, it's fucking unbelievable matchmaking. Um, but I think there's there's two ways to look at it. Perhaps... We should have got him a walkover. Instead, we got him a Mexican brick shit house that has probably got the best chin I've ever seen. And JC, uh, Juan Carlos, his, his manager, is our co-promoter in Mexico, messaged me after he went, I told you, he said, this kid's got the best chin I've ever seen. He went, Conor Ben's a very good fighter because that kid can really fight. That Orozco would give people absolute fits. And so part of me feels like we should have chose someone easier to stop. But let's be honest, do you really want two round blowout? Really? I mean, 10 round war was a little bit, you know, but I thought it was a great performance. You know, I think he lost a round, maybe two, two not really, but he got, he got chin checked, he got backed up. It was a very fast pace, got a little nick, which is nothing major. I think he needed the rounds. A Rosco is a massive 154 pounder, which I think is good for his, you know, his potential fight with Eubank because he was a big lump. And, um, you know, he's obviously been through a lot. And you know this week he's had criticism, he's had media calls, he's had allegations. You know, it's like, it ain't easy. 
But one thing I say about Conor Ben is, fuck me, is he exciting? I mean, just absolute box office every time, even in a fight like that. And uh, I thought it was a really good performance. Would you sign a Roscoe to your stable and do you believe that he could fight no, anyone in the UK and give them issues? I don't think many people are going to be queuing up to fight him, in all honesty. I mean, his chin's unbelievable. Um, but yeah, 100% have a Roscoe back. 100%. Like 154, 160. He's a handful. Conor Ben's cut, does that affect the Eubank no, rematch no, in December? No, Nick. I think, you know, uh, the cut of the butterfly stitches or whatever it was. He's got, uh, you know, for his proposed date, we have 13 weeks. So he's going to have two or three weeks off training now. He's been training for over a year. Um, so, yeah, I think the timing will be perfect. Hands are good. Conversations so, with Chris Eubank yeah, begin this week? On. I mean, look, you know, Eubank is, is a very tough fight. You know, I think, uh, I, I don't think Eubank could stand up to those shots, in all honesty. I mean, you see him get stopped by Liam Smith with, with uh, you know, punches of less, a lot less ferocity than what you saw tonight. But prove me wrong. If it's an easy fight for you, you're going to make millions of pounds. So let's do it. Richardson Hitchens with a good one against the mm. better tonight. What do you do with him next? Because obviously you've got the pro Greg anything Lumen. Yeah, you know, I said to him after, I said, the truth is that you have to be exciting. You know, your main event, he's won every round against a very good fighter. So in that respect, you have to say, congratulations, you know, great performance. I was just screaming at him just to step on the gas. But Zapita's dangerous, you know. So um, big respect for him. It was a good win. And he has a big future in the division. Joel Joyce lost tonight. Yeah, I'm sure you watched that. That's what I said to you. Get stopped inside six rounds. Said, play our interview back. Um, you know, do you believe he should, that's the end of the road for Joel Joyce, or do you think he's still there? Joe Joyce, great guy, great fight. You know, he's just, he's 38. He's taken a huge amount of punishment, inspiring in fights. And his greatest asset was his ability to take punches and walk through them. He can't do it anymore. You know, Zillow Zhang's a good fighter. He's not an elite heavyweight, in my opinion, but he's a world-class heavyweight. I'm, and when I say elite, I'm talking like top three, four, five in the division. You don't think he's top five? Mm, no, not really. I mean, look, that's... I think there's an argument he could creep into number five, but I don't, you know... He's a, he's a lovely man. And But Joe, like, I saw the fight. We watched it. Like, he, he does... He, you know, you can't come in two stone nearly heavier than the last fight if you're just gonna you're just gonna be a punch bag. And that's what he was tonight. He was a punch bag. And he weren't in the fight at any moment. He was getting pinged left, right and centre, and it was a horrific knockout. And I think his punch resistance is not what it was. And you know, that's why I, I thought he'd win the first fight, but I said to you in the interview, he'll get stopped within six rounds. He's he's not the same fighter. Would you look at AJ Joyce? No. Why not? Would be, that would be dangerous. Honestly, come on. Like, D dangerous for for Joe Joyce. But I'm saying, what, no, but what I'm saying is, is he's, 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 he shouldn't be boxing. Like, he's had a great career. You know, he should have been Olympic champion. He's won the interim world heavyweight title. I'm sure he's made a lot of money as well. People around him will know. That's, you can't get hit. You know, you talk about Zhang. AJ punches as hard as Zhang with much more speed. It's... But it's an all-British heavyweight fight, does it not sell? It's not a right fight to make. You, you have to protect these guys. It's a car crash, that fight. Car crash. Zhang is, you know, quite ponderous, quite slow, but, all, you know, good southpaw who can bang a little bit. AJ punches as hard with speed. It would be like, you know, um, you don't, Joe doesn't need that fight. He's, he's had a great career. and Like, let him... Enjoy his life. You can't keep going in and get and taking punishment. What about AJ Zhang, Bird's Nest Stadium, yeah, China? Would you do it? Yeah, absolutely. Absolutely. Um, AJ's always fancy that fight. He beat him in the amateurs. It was a good fight. Would you do it in China? Yeah, of course. Money talks. Do it when? Do you do think it it's, it's doable? Obviously, I, I would imagine Queensbury have an option on them now, so they'll... Yeah, we can talk about that fight, no problem. I mean, look, we want to make the Wilder fight. I think Zhang's an easier fight. Still dangerous, I mean, you know, but why not? Eddie, I'll see you on Tuesday in Dublin. Thank you. Do the nappy first. Do we do enough? Well, I never shut up about it. Uh, it must have been about 17, 16, 17. We nicked their guilt wins. Right, the bouncer's guilt wins. This is no good for me. That's the reality. If you want the honest truth, and I see it every day, 